Final Fantasy XIV is full of lore, including a variety of smaller lore tidbits you can find in the encyclopedia, sighting log, or random conversations. So here are 10 lore bits you might not know about Gridania. If you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe, as I make Final Fantasy XIV lore content every week. And if you learn something new, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. But now, into the list. Number 1. Gridanians could lose their home at any point. Many find the people of Gridania stubborn when it comes to the laws of the forest and the elementals. But many don't realize that this is by pure necessity. The elementals of the forest are the ones who permit the Gridanians to live within the forest. But they can also revoke this privilege at any point. An action they have done before, for example to the Ixels, who used to live within the forest, and also to the people of Amdapur, after the sixth umbral calamity, which caused mankind in the area to flee underground, founding the city-state of Gelmora. And it took many generations before mankind was allowed again to live above ground in the forest. The people of Cardania have made a pact with the elementals, which allows them to live in the forest, but they must also follow the laws of the forest to the latter, so they may keep their home. And that is why all of their government and rules are so heavily focused on what the elementals want and protecting the forest they live in. Number 2. The Pajals You probably noticed them within Gridania and the Twelve's Foot, these children or young people with horns. These are Pajals, Though they are not their own species or race, they are instead simply higher children blessed by the forest. A random higher child is picked by the elementals and they will sprout horns and during their youth they will stop physically aging, keeping their often childlike appearance till their death. They can live for a very long time though patchels are not immortal. But being a patchel is then not a choice. When a child is discovered to be a patchel, it is taken from their family and raised by the conjuring guild. Most of them will never leave the forest, and they live their life in service to Gridania and the Elementals. And while most Pajal take this role with pride, there are some who wish they had simply been allowed to be normal. The Gates You may have noticed the gates of Gridania are named after animals. The White Wolf, the Blue Badger, the Black Boar, and the latest one, the Yellow Serpent. These kind of feel like somebody just took random animals and colors and mashed it together to give the gates names, but these actually come from Gridanian myths of guardian animals that stand guard over the four cardinal directions. So each gate, sort of leading out of the city in the direction the animal protects, was named after the animal. I for one though would love to see a blue badger at some point. Number 4. Apkalu Falls Once there was a merchant in the city of Gridania who tried to hatch and raise Apkalu. He failed. To add insult to injury, this place was named after his failure. Though today this place is more known for being Louis Wah's meditation place before the calamity, and currently the bane of any summoner who has their class quest giver hang out here, and this place always just feels like a chore to run to. But did you know there is also an achievement merchant here? If you go talk to Jonathan, you might have some achievement currency, and you can get some mounts, minions, and glamour from him. Go take a look at it. Number 5. Miketo's Amphitheater The amphitheater was founded by the famed minstrel Miketo. Being born in Gridania, she gifted this place to her home, and since then the amphitheater has been a major location for several yearly events. The theatre itself is known to possess an audio quality unheard in other areas of Eorzea. For a long time this confused scholars, but after some research they found out that the reason for this amazing audio is actually the small pond behind the stage. 6. The Guilds There are three guilds within Gridania, the Leatherworking Guild, Woodworking Guild and the Botanist Guild. Each of them gather or uses resources from the forest for their crafting. And each of these guilds must operate under a strict rule and only take what the elementals have allowed to be taken, meaning they have limitation on what they can gather and how they use the things they gather from the forest. But this limitation actually has made these guilds so much better. The botanist guilds are known to tend to gardens and plant trees in both settlements and in the forest. 
The Woodworking Guild treats each piece of wood as the precious thing it is, and the Leatherworking Guild has earned a name for their quality product and their ability to use each and every part of the animal in their craft. Number 7. Origin of the Caroline Canopy The Caroline Canopy is the first place a new player in Gridania goes to, as it is the home of the Gridanian Adventure Guild. But do you know its history? Many years ago, a Lalevel shipwright and his daughter came to the Twelveswood. They had travelled for a long time, but decided to settle in Gridania to make their new home. But at the time, the people of Gridania were even more wary of outsiders than they are now. And the two endured name-calling, spiteful pranks, and worse from the residents of the city. It was Mother Mion's grandfather who offered to shelter them in a storage cabin that stood where the Caroline Canopy stands today. And they took up residence there, and with time, people began to accept them. It was some time later, when the time came to erect a new water wheel, that the Lalafell shipwright offered his services. He drew up a plan for the big water wheel we see today, but sadly was struck down by illness fortnight after doing so, never seeing his vision completed. This is when his daughter stepped up to finish her father's dream. At first, people mocked her, the shy little girl with her yellow carline flower in her hair, but that didn't deter her. She studied hard, and in ten years' time, the water wheel was built under her guidance, and she had earned enough knowledge to be seen as a master of her craft. Sadly, not long after the water wheel was built, she fell ill to the same illness that took her father, and passed away. The water wheel was given the name Figaga's Gift after the young woman, and Mother Mion, she transformed the old home of the Lalafell father and daughter into the Caroline canopy that exists today naming it after the flower Figaga used to wear in her hair, in hope to carry on the spirit of welcoming acceptance to all that would seek shelter here, regardless of their origin. Number 8. The Seeds Year Council Britannia's government is the Seeds Year Council. At the moment, it is led by the elder Seeds Year Canesena, but the council used to be a council of hearers, those conjurers able to hear the elementals, but now it only consists of few patules. Before the calamity, the council would conduct their business at the lotus stand, an open-air area, so the elemental can easily view the proceeding. There, decisions on the city-state's future policies and laws were made, all of them highly influenced by the will of the elemental. But after the calamity, during the time where Gridania had to be repealed, the council vested its full power in Canesena, the elder seats here, until such a time as the danger would pass. This policy has yet to change, and she remains the head of Gridania State to this day. Number 9. Gridania was rebuilt. The Gridania we walk around today is not the same as player walked around in 1.0. Because of its closeness to the Cardinal Flat, Gridania was heavily damaged during the calamity, leading to a large effort to rebuild the city. And while some places remain in the same areas, others have moved. The most notable being the Miketo Amphitheater, which moved from here to here. This is also the reason why the refugees did not take refuge in Gridania like they did in Ulda. Even though the city was closer to places like Alamigo, where many refugees come from, the state of the city was not very inviting, both from the people's inherent distrust of outsiders and, well, the city was in bad shape, so instead most of them moved on to what they saw as a better life in Ulda. But we will talk about that in the next list. Number 10. The Acorn Orchard. The Acorn Orchard is a playground built by the Carpenter Guild for the children and those young at heart within the city. One of the plans was that with this playground the children would get the feel with their own hands the grain of the finest forest wood learn its properties, and perhaps become interested in carpentry. This is also an excellent place for new players to try out jumping between small areas, and I like to think of this little track as the first jumping puzzle new players encounter. Now, I hope you learned something from this list. Tell me, are there any things you feel are left out? Did you learn something new? And what places would you like to get a lore list like this on? Let's talk about it in the comments, and while you're down there, 
to all the good YouTube stuff, like button, subscribe and so on. It helps keep the algorithmic overlord happy.